but most importantly come on either of you players to give us a good series because we deserve something a little bit better a little bit better than that pvp that pvp left a lot to the imagination as dream will leave nothing to the imagination right here in the bottom left side our red terran double scv already out to the top of the map from brave star gaming this is dream and the top right we do have our blue terran player from kaizy gaming it's innovation So yeah, for me, Innovation, definitely the fave, but I've been loving watching Dream play lately, and he's only getting better and better, and it's really cool to see because he's already back from his military service, so he's one of these players that hopefully is just going to stay good and really be that kind of, you know, S-tier player, and that is, I think, extremely exciting. Extremely exciting. So yeah, really cool to see Dream just continuing to improve because he's been back a good long while. And, you know, when he came back, he started putting out results pretty much right away. But what's cool is that he's putting out better and better results, right? It's not just he came back and hit a certain level and that was it. He's still pushing boundaries. And right now, he's probably the scariest he's ever been. Need I not remind you, he's 7 0 Innovation's team in the Chinese Team League that uh, in the playoffs. And that included a 3 0 over Innovation, a 2 0 over Time, and a 2 0 over Deer. That is not a lousy set of players. And Dream just, you know, cranked out the 7-0, thank you very much, and knocked the second favorite team of the tournament out of the playoffs. So, yeah, Dream can absolutely beat Innovation as well, and their match history recently has been a lot of fun. Um, it's been pretty back and forth, actually, after that, uh, I think Innovation was on like a 6-7 map losing streak against Dream. Uh, but he did turn it around with a couple of wins, I think even in a Wardy TV event or something. It's definitely something I was casting. Uh, in, a, in an Alima League? No, sorry, in a Doyu Cup, that was it. In the Doyu Cup, Innovation turned it around. And he's won twice since that uh, 5 0 map streak from, or uh, 6 0 map streak from Dream. As we see some initial micro here. There's actually not a bad start from Dream. He gets that Reaper. But, um, yeah, he's lost twice since then, uh, Dream. Or one, Innovation's won twice since then, better way to say it. I think that's very cool. How was the Innovation? This is your very typical. I'm not getting super hyped about it. This is a very typical two racks defense when you go one gas that was meant to be an expand. You SCV scout at a point in time as these SCVs are actually in some trouble. You will get one of the Reapers though. You SCV scout at a time before you put the command center down. Hey, that's actually getting out of hand. These Reapers getting past that bunker initially is kind of a big deal. And now the Hellion's not here. Okay then, okay. SCV goes down. Five of has killed so far. And this Hellion should put an end to this, but... Yeah, for how long? Innovations continue to lose SCVs. This is way more than he's meant to lose. This defense is usually pretty okay, but losing the Reaper, that uh, is actually a pretty big deal. Wow, he's actually on the verge of losing this Hellion as well. He is going to chase these uh, Reapers down. This Reaper probably just commits for one more worker. 11 workers killed. That's massive damage. Dream's going to be in a good spot from here. So yeah, what Innovation did, he wanted to one gas expand. He saw with the SCV that there was no racks in the base. So he brings the SCV back from the low ground, uses those minerals to build bunkers instead. And this should be okay for Innovation typically. It is the correct response against this two racks and you can absolutely hold with this. But losing the Reaper takes a lot of your DPS away. And so from there, he started to lose the Marines and that's allowed those Reapers to just run him in circles in his own main. And that obviously is problematic. Now, right now, this counter attack though, two Hellions actually made you okay in this. One of them is already kind of low. He could delay the CC on the low ground. Is that what he's going to go for? He's actually going to go straight into the main. He's going to delay the starboard. I'm surprised he doesn't delay the command center. Maybe he just feels like he needs to delay as many units as possible. Cyclone's going to pop. This is the end of the Hellions. And uh, one more SCV is possible. This Hellion on the low ground will maybe think about that, but he decides to go back across. Two Marines just and racks down as Innovation sets up a reactor. Starts his own CC very late, down eight workers. And Dream looking fantastic off the Proxy 2 racks in game number one. I'm going to see this Magfield starting up on the factory as well. I actually really like this. Because I actually think Innovation right now is obviously in a bit of a weird position where he's a bit behind from where he'd like to be. And Magfield is so good at punishing that because these Cyclones just become so good against a lot of the singular units you'll rely on to defend right now. You know, if you're trying to get a tank out... And it's not, you know, it's only one tank. You can realistically take a tank shot on the Cyclones to get in range, lock on, and then get out. And you just, you murder that tank. 
And so if Innovation doesn't have the right amount of units, that Magfield's going to be really, really good. So I love that from Dream. I definitely think it's a good way to keep a map activity and keep the harassment up in a game where Innovation's obviously trailing quite significantly. And you know, Innovation made one Cyclone of his own, but now he's going to be playing against Magfield. That Cyclone is not going to stand a chance the second it gets locked onto. It's uh, not going to be good at all. Quick question from the chat. Are the pairings random? Why didn't they make two PVTs? Because it's the same order that they dropped down from the GSL bracket in. So Innovation and Dream were in the same half of the GSL round of eight. And Partying and Trap were in the same half of the GSL round of eight. Which is typically how you do things if you're trying to find a top six. You know, basically if these players had won their GSL round of eight, they would have met in the semifinals. Uh, so when they lose, if you imagine a double Elim bracket, they would drop into that side initially. Uh, so that's just the way it basically works. So that's how the matches are determined. Uh, basically comes down to where they're placed in the bracket. Which I think is a fair way of doing it, just as fair as any other. You could maybe argue you could base it on points, on ESL points or something. But I actually think this is a little bit fairer anyway. I like it. It's okay. Alright, well... Marines attack on that natural. We do see the few Cyclones moving around the left-hand side. Going to come up to the top as the Raven overhead and a command center on the main base. About halfway done for the moment here. As this medevac of innovation goes down the right side. So trying to get something done. I mean, he has to drop. He has to do some kind of damage. He's going to see the Raven here dropping the auto turret. Nice safe 3 CC location, by the way, for Mino. Doesn't have it anywhere near the edge where the Cyclones can lock on and take full advantage, but obviously just losing. Well, I mean, he's just he just lost himself a uh, five SCVs. I mean, that's massive. Let's see what this drop can do. I'm gonna say not a lot of Cyclone tank back over here. Let's do see our Marines pushing into this main base. So unloading a few of these SCVs going down. Yes, he's being picked off there. The Marines jumping back, and then we'll cycle on the tank. Continuing to fight. The Vikings going to get rid of that medevac, and just going to be seen another Marine picked up. Innovation going to type out GG. Across the map, he's losing SCVs to Raven Order turrets as well. And Dream is going to take game number one of this best. This is Innovation. And we start off in this bottom right-hand side with our turret, who did take the first game of the series. In the red, in the bottom right from Brave Star Gaming. Give it up if you're cheering on Dream. And the bottom left, our Blue Terran is Innovation. All right, so second map of this getting set up. Racks, gas, getting ready to go, and SCV on either side of things here. So yeah, just a little bit of build up, a little bit of setup right now as we're going to be seeing the uh, gas coming in from Innovations. So getting that up and rolling. SCV is going to move down this ramp, and yeah, just one gas for the moment. And both of them will go one gas expand with this SCV scout. Very large map, definitely one which you can one gas expand on very safely in TVT because. Proxy Rex Reaper just doesn't really have many ways into the base. So it's definitely not as popular on this map as it is on Eternal, which has a lot of surface area around that main and definitely creates a lot of issues. So this will just be one Reaper expansion, maybe even just straight to the reactor afterward as well. As Innovation comes in, he will block that uh, command center location. Both of them actually hiding their SCVs to the side until they're ready to come in. So pretty much the same play from both so far here. All right, well, there's our command center from both players. So both players getting the CC started. We do see the Reaper is continuing in from Dream, a depot on the wall off. SCV is going to get home safely enough. And, oh, ho, oh, oh, Innovation, though, waiting in the darkness, waiting undercover. And he's going to get himself some good damage. Good grenade from Dream. Bops the Reaper grenade. Uh, props the Reaper of Innovation to the side. That grenade is perfect to get Dream's Reaper out of a sticky scenario. As Innovation went for a safety marine into Reactor, 
Dream actually went for a second Reaper, which means his factory is later. Now, he does have a little bit more on the ground initially here. But overall, I think I like this for innovation. A Reaper and a Marine are uh, going to be okay. Well, well, not if he loses the Reaper, but he's actually going to draw the Reapers of his opponent up. And this is a smart move because I know if he just kind of runs home, he's kind of drawn the Reapers over there anyway, right? This at least brings one Reaper away. And now he's got a Marine that can at least put damage onto this Reaper. And that's obviously somewhat okay. He brings an SCV to help fight it. The Marine gets bopped, though. And that Reaper is a problem, as this Reaper did get a kill. And this is where the reactor becomes that little bit greedy for innovation. Two SCVs go down. This Hellion, you're going to pop out. It's going to target this Reaper down. That's three kills, though. And he is going to get the Reaper eventually. Good dart back from innovation. Made the right call there. Still three SCVs of what was more or less a mirrored opening. I mean, innovation will still have a faster starport. But this was... Um, definitely a little bit sad after he did such a great job of catching that first reaper initially and pushing it back and all the rest he kind of guaranteed himself the ability to be greedy but then of course wasn't really able to follow it up reaper from dream comes down scv taking damage hellion gonna be uh putting some damage out so reaper is taking some shots but the marines get here as well reaper goes down just like that and well, it's going to be seeing innovation. Gathering these units on the ramp. Hellion moving across. And a few of these Marines setting up as well. Innovation going to lift up the tank. The Marines, all of this coming across the bottom side of the map. So going to go straight through the bottom. Again, his fastest starport, his fastest factory kind of lent him to do this. The only thing is he lost a bit of the factory advantage because he had to build a Hellion defensively. Dream went straight to the tech lab. And Dream's got a Viking now. This is going to do nothing at all. He's going to commit for it. Okay, he turns back around. There's a tank in position as well. There's just nothing you can really do there. Hellion's going to try and win a fight against a Marine, but he runs into even more Marines. Is anything going to work out for innovation in this game? He is going to get into the main base now. So he can siege up this tank, but not in a very good position, right? I mean, this tank is very much so in the open. Yeah, that tank fight is actually doing pretty well, though. He's going to get tank for a tank. He also loses the medevac. This is where it becomes important because now he's going to get a few SCVs as well. I feel like the few SCVs on top of what he got maybe makes this worthwhile. Five workers? Yeah, okay. I can see that being okay. You just tank for a tank and then four marines for five workers. You lose the medevac too. I would take that. And I think innovation will as well. Evens up the work account and brings this game back to being a little bit more playable as innovation starts up command center number three. And that's the biggest difference of all right now is that Dream's got that third CC already finished. That's why, you know, Innovation's got more army on the map still. 26 versus 15. Next question is, can he do something more with it? Or is Dream just going to start retaking that worker lead with that third base? Medivac around the right side. Looking for a drop into the natural. Marines going down, bit of damage being done. Innovation, gonna unsiege the tank and you know, as he unloads a few Marines here. He picks off one Marine very quickly, very easily. This Raven of Inno setting up. A couple of racks gonna be finishing and push forward here. These tanks, well, I guess siege they need to win this fight out against this tank and they will. Innovation pushes in. He's gonna lose his medevac in a moment. At the same time, liberating the main base is gonna get rid of quite a lot of SCVs. And the combo from Innovation working out wonders for him right now. He's not going to get the target fire on that siege tank in the background, though. He kills 19 SCVs, and Inno does major damage with the push. Wants to maybe keep that medevac alive, which for the moment he will. Tank fire is good. Where are we at in terms of upgrades? Dreams oh, got stim already, actually, and 1-1 one, one is all well on the way. As he has to evacuate SCVs out from the trapped corner of engineering base. I've been there and done that, Dream. Don't worry about it. I share your pain. But 12 worker lead is big, but this is a mistake from Inno. Uh, what he's just done is he's just lifted his starport and barracks to swap add-ons, and then he's re-rallied all of his production structures. So before they've landed to build the add-ons, they've re-rallied and started flying out the front. So, mistake from Innovation. I've also been there and done that. Dream and Innovation just like, hey, Wardy, you remember all these silly things you get really tilted over in TVT and you get sad at yourself? Well, don't worry. We do them too. We'll be, you know, you can be sad with us. It's like, thanks, guys. Innovation and Dream. Got Wardy's back. Alright, well, we've got ourselves a couple medivacs to go landing into this main. 
This is obviously Dream's potential to deal damage right now with that Stim Pack. And Innovation just not being in position. So yeah, Stim is pretty darn good. Five workers, I mean, that feels like it could have been worse, honestly. Might still even be worse as he loses a Siege Tank at the front. Five workers, a tank. And now at the same time, Dream's going elsewhere on the map. He's got 1-1 one, one, and that really is just such a powerful set of upgrades against a 0-0 zero, zero opponent. Mirror matchups are so reliant on upgrades in TVT with Marine on Marine is really no different. And now Innovation is going to be locked out from down his uh, natural ramp. He's going to pull SEVs to fight this. He still doesn't have Stim. It's such a painful approach into this siege tank. He's going to clean it up at the cost of 8 SEVs across the map. He's got double order turrets. That's going to get three SCVs and a worker pull. At the same time, this Marine's dropping the main base. Oh my god, he's making the tanks fight each other. Oh my god. Dream is kind of just all over innovation again right now. He just has units absolutely everywhere. The Viking lands in the back of this mineral line. A few SCVs go down already. God damn it, Raya. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, I say god damn, but you know what? Everything kind of evens out right now. Army supplies, even work accounts, even upgrades are getting there from Innovation. Um, the armory is very late from Dream, although Innovations is also later. But it's not like it's 1-1 for like... It's not going to be 2-2 for like two minutes while Innovation sits on 1-1. It's going to be 2-2 versus 1-1 for like 30 seconds or so. And that's much more manageable than what it could have been if Dream had be on, been on time with that armory. So... You know what? The game really does even out a little bit. One of the differences will be this third base. Obviously, Dream gets the boosted income of a gold, but he is going to be reduced on gas, and you can see Innovation does go up to all six gases. So Dream might be a little bit more marine-heavy here, while Innovation might just get a second factory a little bit sooner and be able to afford that. So, yeah, that is actually a bit of a difference between the two of them right now. And that'll be an interesting dynamic to see play out in the TBT. Let's see a few of these marines already dropping in, and Innovation... Has to bring his own marines back to fight this. He loses a siege tank. As he will get in here, these few marines going down. This medevac of dreams going to get chased, shut down, and fallen out of the sky. As marine tank medevac continues through the center. He do see a fourth base now from dream. Setting up on the right side as well. And just a push coming through. I mean, always like it when these guys are able to set up into attacks like this, right? Because it definitely feels like the kind of thing that's, um... Definitely feels like the kind of thing that gives you opportunities in TVT. You get to see the chances of maybe, oh, I've got a chance to load up my units and drop them here or there. Wow, what a scar this is. If Innovation hadn't loaded up, he actually would have just killed that medevac, I think. Although I guess Dream was paying attention. He would have pulled it back. Yeah, seeing this entire drop coming down. Now he sees it unloading. The thing is, this gold base has got a weakness to the south side, and if you get tanks sieged up, you can obviously, I mean, anything just running into position here can just deny this gold mining. I believe this raven is still alive, by the way, as innovation. Looks like he's just hotkeyed it back home, and somehow it's going to get there. Through a missile turret, through the top of some marines. Marines now going to chase him and chase for it. Misses it! Oh my god. This raven has been on a wild ride. Well, innovation, there's more you can do on this bottom side of the map. It doesn't have to be the gold. Of course, the main base is a pretty reasonable target as well. The first tank that gets Siege targeted for a few moments, but it will survive. And this position is frustrating. Of course, the Viking is a good way to push back these um, medivacs, but you know what? It doesn't help if you uh, lose the Viking to the Marines, so that definitely isn't great. As we see, a Siege tank actually gets picked off as well, and uh, this is a really nice position. Going to get rid of some of these production structures, even if it's just one rack. That's really nice. At the same time, this drop of Dream is back. And it's into the main base. They're so doing well here. He's had a lot of success with dropping into the main this game. Viking kills the medevac full of Marines, though. And at least it gets shut down. So one less thing for Benno to worry about. He's actually in range of this Rax on the left side as well. I didn't realize that initially. Those are two reactors nullified and killed off here. I like that position from Inno, but of course, it's a lot of units locked down to the bottom side of the map at the moment. And Dream might look to take advantage of that moving through the front. Would love to see Inno get a gold base sensor tower because then it just gives them that little bit of a heads up about anything of Dream that's really moving forward here. That's a hell of an anti-armor missile, guys. 
Holy shit, Dream's actually gonna turn to fight this. Even with the anti-armor missile, I felt like that was a very brazen move. Uh, Dream already sees that innovation setting up to deny the gold base of mining, so... He's also gonna lose this gas. Now, he does have the fourth base up, so he can send his SCVs elsewhere to mine. He's obviously losing the advantage of having taken the gold over here. Oh, what a game. We get ourselves into game number two. Finally, a game today which goes past that 10 minute marker. And has a little bit of back and forth action. I really feel like we deserved it with the way that uh, everything else has gone so far today. Here we go. Actually, Dream picking a fight into Siege Tanks. Didn't like that in the slightest. The Vikings here as well for are doing great. Just shutting down every single medevac and really feels like Dream is struggling all of a sudden. Oversaturated on the fourth base because he can't mine the gold. He is down 40 supply. I mean, this fight definitely wasn't great for him. He's losing all of his medevacs. And that's kind of the issue right now, right? He's just losing units left, right, and center. Definitely falling into some problematic uh, positions. Uh, oh, an army of Dream pushing forwards here. The tanks of Inno making their way through too. And there's still got an army on the bottom side, by the way, so... This is still a bit awkward because this army can't really do anything, right, from the bottom side. He could just lift and drop the main. Uh, that's obviously a huge weak point that we see at the moment in this main base. No missile turrets or anything there. Sensor tower is denied, so you can't actually see the army moving. Innovation actually scans and he sees these drops. Oh my god, interception! One, two, and three! Oh no. I mean, that is just another 20 plus supply of dream. I mean, 30 supply, really. Three full medevacs. Uh, a few marines run in and try and fight over here, and they'll get the tanks, and he will clean up. So Innovation's kind of follow-up drop isn't great, but obviously he just killed 20 marines and three medevacs. I don't think he's too worried as he has air control, he's got lip rays to push back. This orbital command is kind of dead, quite frankly. His libs are going to push a bit further forward themselves. I mean, Innovation now, there's nothing to protect that gold, and Dream knows it, so he just lift it. Innovation, I feel like he could have maybe stimmed up there and chased it away already. It doesn't feel too confident. Is Innovation actually going to catch Dream moving up this side? Well, it's just a numbers game. Innovation's also on 3-3 versus 2-2. And that's a fight that just doesn't go any other way. As Innovation comes up, only one tank going to be left alive. Well, that's... I mean, Innovation just won this with the Marines. He didn't even need the siege tanks in play. Oh, loses some of the Vikings here. Whoa, and turns around. He loses a lot of the Vikings, but again... Does it really matter for much? Not really. Still up in upgrades as well as so these Marines are not going to do great. The tanks are seized in high, high numbers. High ground vision available. And that is going to be Innovation putting Dream below 100 supply. And Innovation ties us up one to one in this best of five. And we get ourselves a bit of a series going in this one. Good. Alrighty, so. Game number three. We're tied up one to one. Game one, and Dream gets that good advantage, plays it out. Game two, Innovation kind of gets into a good spot, right? And I think that's definitely true. Dream kind of pulled it back a bit, but then Innovation was able to push through for the win in the end. It was a fun game, because uh, it really was Innovation early. That army supply advantage, he made it work. He got the kills he needed to. Dream fought back, dropping the main base, even the game out a lot. But Innovation just really played the positional game amazingly. And he really made a lot of that stuff happen on that bottom side of the map. And obviously all the little things then started to fall apart for Dream. And that's how Innovation ties this up one to one in this best of five series. Again, the winner of this goes to the DreamHack SC2 Masters Fall Season Finals. Uh, what that means is actually if you qualify for that, that's guaranteed $1,500 and 25 ESL Pro Tier points. Again, you've already got stats, TY, Dong, Regu, and Rogue there from the Korea region as top four of GSL. Trap win won his plane, so he's there, and the winner of this will be the final Korean player in the tournament. So yeah, really cool, um... Really cool, um... Event, the season finals, and uh, looking forward to seeing everyone uh, be a part of that. Should be really awesome, honestly. Should be really, really cool. As you have our SCV, gonna make its way up into the natural, and... Let's see if you have Dream setting up. Another Deep are gonna finish. This factory from Dream setting up in the main base. So he's getting that factory up and running here with the SCVs mining away. Reaper is on the way out. It's gonna be popping and Dream gonna be heading down to the bottom left hand side. 
factory gets started in the main base. As you just see the Reaper of Innovation up the left-hand side as well, and just trying to see what will uh, go on here. But obviously, it's pretty fast expands from both. It's a slightly faster factory, and hence later expand from Dream. As Reaper gets here, and obviously, you know, Reaper's out on the map. He will get an SCV kill. Well, he should get an SCV kill, but he's missed target fight so many times. He gets it in the end at the cost of the Reaper. Man, he, he really missed the target fire on that a couple times over, didn't he? That was uh, a little bit funky. Why does this qualify from Korea so different than the rest? Because Korea... Because, because the DreamHack events in general are meant to be circuit events, right? But the season finals are meant to add a bit of global competition to you that otherwise wouldn't really have a lot of global competition. So the DreamHack events don't have a budget to just run an extra Korean tournament because it wasn't, you know, there wasn't, you know, that wasn't what that money was designed for, what those tournaments were designed for. GSL is the equivalent of the DreamHack Masters events for the European, American, Latin American, etc. regions, right? So that's why they take the GSL players and use GSL basically as a qualifier to that season finals. So that's why this is a little bit different because just basically you should just look at it as under the entire system that GSL is basically the Korean regional that we see the European regional of in DreamHack and all the rest. Um, but yeah, basically, I mean, the circuit and the Korean circuit have always been separate. And this is just a case of obviously the GSL continues as normal, whereas the DreamHack circuit got completely messed up, right? This was meant to be offline events um, and all of that good stuff being played around the world. And this was altered for that. Obviously, the GSL, that didn't change. So I think it's cool, right? The season finals, it really was sold as like a bonus, right? I don't think DreamHack or ESL had to do the season finals because I think the season finals really could, you know, really is just a bonus, right? Like they could have just been like, right, we're going to do EU tournament and NA tournament, etc., etc. And that's just going to be it. But the season finals really does allow for that crossover, something a little bit more awesome at the end of it all. I like it, right? It does keep that essence of global competition in a year where it's very tough to get that global competition as the Reaper picks up an SCV here. So yeah, um, especially also, you know, because you couldn't make the entire event global because there's going to be just too many latency issues. So just having it, like I say, like almost like a bonus on the end of it all is uh, really, really cool. As you see, our stim setting up and getting going. This is going to be seeing our tank pushing back a couple of these Hellions. And this is going to see our stim pack starting up. We actually have Cloak Banshees on the map, which is something you don't see all the time in TVT nowadays. Just because of the popularity of the Raven openers. It doesn't leave a lot of space for Banshee play, but while Innovation's Raven at the moment is out the front, and these the patience on the Banshees is paying off right now. Because he might just be able to get in here and start to get a lot of these uh, SCVs. Alien does go down, so Innovation cleans that up. Oh, Banshee's found by a single Marine. That's massive. As the Cyclone in the main base doesn't have a scan, so oh, it's going to be a double whammy hit. How's it going to be seen? Missile turrets trying to set up. Where's the Raven? The Raven drops auto turret in the main base. Okay, well, this Banshee will go down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It gets away. It gets away. Banshee over here gets shot down. Scan is good. Okay, honestly, this was pretty okay for... Um, this is pretty okay for Innovation. Only five workers lost. This could have been so much worse. The investment into the uh, Cloak Banshee is kind of a big one too, right? It means you're not going to have a Raven of your own, or if you do, it's very delayed, and in this case, he just doesn't have a Raven. So Dream's going to miss that utility in his army. Plus, I mean, obviously just the straight-up cost of it, so that's 300 minerals, 300 gas for five SCVs. That's kind of a big investment. He did go also kill a Cyclone, but a Cyclone is also getting very outdated at this stage of the game. You know, that's a hundred, you know, that's money which in innovation invested for an earlier purpose that now doesn't really, you know, have much of a reason to be around any longer. Marines tank. 
Heading down the left hand side, we do see a couple of Marines and tanks over here. This is going to be full on base trade mode as the Order Turret is actually helping to start off picking off some of these Marines. Innovation defensively, while well, he does have a high ground tank. And right now, that is a lot more than what Dream has got as Innovation just runs straight in over here. And the high ground siege tank is going to be absolutely massive. Uh, that really changes so much. And Innovation might even last long enough to get Combat Shield up, which would be even even a bigger deal, right? I was going to see some SCVs start to evacuate. Dream has just taken the heavy hits initially. Uh, he's going to see an attempt to break up this ramp. Double Siege Tank in the way, by the way. Double Siege Tank up this ramp as Innovation just tries to trade out what he can, throwing SCVs at this too. There's only really the Siege Tanks left, and that's obviously not great because the tanks are not great. They're actually putting damage out to base trade, and Dream very much so knows it. Types out GG. Innovation with the base trade setup. Is going to put himself onto match point here in this qualifying series. 2-1 lead for Innovation. And in the bottom left-hand side, I feel like they've just swapped colors, so I apologize for that. Our red Terran player is Innovation. Taking on the blue Terran in the top right side of the map. This, from Brave Star Gaming, is Good Old Dream. Right then, game number four. And no more mistakes allowed from Dream. This is it. Do or die. There is no real room for mistake any longer here. As we set ourselves up into this, uh, this fourth map. And just a very quick mention. I was actually planning on casting the Kung Fu Cup today, guys. Because I was told it would return today. But we're an hour away from that event theoretically starting, and the bracket isn't up, so I'm assuming it's not actually happening, and that I've been fed false information. So, yes, this will be my last series of the day, most likely. Um, the only thing I might do is I might cast a couple of replays, because I need a YouTube video for the weekend, because I'm going away tonight uh, for a couple of days. So I might do that, but obviously this is the last game of the DreamHack SCG Masters GSL plan. And as we get ourselves a Reaper coming up on either side of the map. Funnily enough, neither player really uh, building their racks at the front here. Doesn't want to get sieged up. Kind of wants to make it a little bit scarier than the SCV first comes up the ramp for a scout, I guess. But obviously shouldn't really fake anybody out for too long. As that SCV checks out the main base, Reaper's going to finish in a moment. And the factory is building from both. So both of them going double gas. Let's see if either of them wants to stay double gas in it and on one base for a while. Or if this will just be double gas expanse. Mm. Yeah, Innovation is going to stay on one base. So he keeps three workers in each gas. He will build a starport. And Innovation, with the map advantage in hand, is going to get aggressive. Finds the Reaper here. Oh, he's in the kind of line of sight blocker there initially. Dream decides to run for it. Innovation will not catch that Reaper in time, though. He wasn't close enough to it initially to really take any further advantage. Now the second Reaper's out from Dream. Yeah, so what Innovation's going to do here is he's going to go Reaper, Heli, and Medivac and just try to bust his opponent down. So it's kind of weird because Dream, obviously the faster factory definitely helps with this. And he is making the right units, but he's going to be outnumbered for sure. You know, he's not going to have a starport to help him out either. And he's just going to be on, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Hellion count will probably be less because he should probably cut Hellions after two. He's gone for this very typical three Reaper, two Hellion opener. So now he goes for a Cyclone. I think it's going to be a little while until that Cyclone really comes into play here. And that's the issue is, oh, 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 even better if Innovation can catch these units. Oh my god, did Dream not see that? Oh my god, Dream's lining up to go up into Innovation's natural. Innovation uh, blindsides him from the other side. Oh, but Innovation might lose a Hellion. Ah, he's going to get so many kills here. This is so much value for Innovation. He does lose a Reaper toward the end. Two Reapers, though, for three Reapers and two Hellions. That was an amazing start. And now we go across the map. Well, Dream's actually building a Siege Tank. That might not matter because the Siege Tank can't be in every, you know, in all the locations it maybe needs to be right now. Two more Reapers coming across, obviously reactoring those out. So they reinforce very quickly. Oh my god, the Siege Tank. 
has to defend the high ground. It's actually going to come down the low ground, but I actually feel as soon as these extra Reapers show up, this is engageable. Yeah, two extra Reapers and Innovation for sure knows it. Uh, he doesn't want to run up the ramp, though, so he's just going to be happy, content with holding the low ground. But just surprising to me, because obviously Innovation is on a much later command center here. Now he's going to load up the Hellions, though, and it's going to keep the Marines moving around. And obviously, the Siege Tank is nowhere near in position to deal with Hellions, and he actually has to un uh, unseage the tank. Now a second tank pops, though. It should be the kind of the end of this, then. Innovation down a worker still. And he's going to go for the tank here. It's just not going to do enough. Could he have gone up that ramp? Could he afford this? Maybe. It's a really tough call to make. Wow. I just feel like with such a good start for this to then not work out, it definitely feels like if you can't make this work with such a good start, like, I guess the question is, did it not work? He still did deny building SCVs off the natural this entire time. But then again, he's only just set up his own CC, so he's still behind that one worker. Oh, innovation, big mistake. SCVs are following an SCV building a refinery. He needs to fix that. That's five SCVs currently AFK. And he does realize it, and he fixes it right now. That was actually a little bit worrying, because you can't afford to be down workers in this scenario. As one of the Hellions trying to drop in the main is unsuccessful, but he will keep this drop on the map, and that's still a threat that he has. And that, you could argue, is another of his advantages here. Well, it would be if this Viking wasn't going to come and, uh, going to come along and push it back. Although he's actually going to get around the Viking into the main base, so he might just drop in and commit to the drop in here for some SCVs. Yeah, he's just going to go for it right now. So he's just going to go for as many of these SCVs as possible. He's going to get a couple already. Three, four. That's actually really good because now he's going to get a few more. And finally, Innovation is starting to get the damage done, which he was looking for. Six workers killed, and he takes the worker advantage. And the greatest thing for Innovation is he still holds a good army supply behind it. Oftentimes when you get a worker league like this in TVT, it's like, oh, well, that's nice, but you're actually down like 10 army supplies, so your opponent comes across the map and kills you. Or, you know, forces you to trade SCVs to survive. I actually think Innovation's okay, okay here. Double Raven against no Raven. He's going to have... Pro well, yeah, he's got two siege tanks of his own. His third is well on the way. He's even building Vikings, so he can push back the one Viking of Dream. I like it a lot for Innovation right now. This Medivac sees what's there. He sees the couple Medivacs, and he sees that they're maybe making a beeline for the main base. Obviously, that's really good info for Innovation and nowhere his opponent's trying to play. He actually loses that Medivac, but that's not the end of the world. Innovation has been very responsible with his siege up. He does not want to siege too early because he knows the moment he sieges is going to be problematic. These medivacs are going to go in the main. Uh, I was going to say, the moment he sieges, the moment he knows for sure that obviously this is a commitment and there's not much else to be done. Drops a order turret down. He's actually going to get a medivac, which means that this siege tank gets abandoned. Now, all of a sudden, we had Vikings chasing. Could he have matrixed? I feel like he could have matrixed the medivac and continued to chase. Reaper in the main base picks up some kills, by the way. Three SEVs. Innovation gets some final little bits and pieces of damage. And that makes it a still a six-worker advantage innovation. And now he holds the army advantage. He's got that faster third CC. He's got Stimpak already halfway done. Innovation. It's all about him right now in this game number four. And Dream needs to find a moment to turn this around. Else he is going to fall apart. And his run in this attempt to play into the season finals is going to be over. Innovation might just not give Dream much breathing room right now. Especially with the Viking-Raven combo. I actually think that's just, you know, a huge advantage that Innovation holds that isn't written down in numbers anywhere, right? Just having air control like this in a game like this, it's so powerful. The only thing I'd say is obviously a couple medivacs might be nice. Then he could really make a play into the main base or so. Right now, the best he could do is kind of siege up on the edges. Even that isn't super pretty. He sees the tanks here. He's going to take a pretty passive position, really. All right. He's got the air control, and he can keep a track of everything. He knows these tanks aren't going anywhere. So as far as innovation is concerned there, he's pretty pretty well aware of what's going on. He's going to un-siege. He needs to be careful of where he runs to with those tanks. Is he just going to siege up in range? He sieges up in range. And he's going to Matrix to make sure he doesn't lose a tank, because he would have lost. He actually only had one tank in range. That's a lot of damage taken for innovation. Of course, during this, he's got his third CC out in position. Siege is up again. And this is it. Every, right now, he's just trading a Matrix for a Siege tank every time. And that's a trade you'll pretty much always take. As Medivacs load up. Looks like they're going to make a play around the right side of the map. Scan into the main, sees the Medivacs making their leave, though. So Innovation kind of just knows it's happening. 
As Tank still trying to get in position here, maybe that could have been a Matrix. I was just out of range in the end. But actually, I feel like Innovation didn't notice that these Medivacs are coming across the map. And that is problematic because he doesn't have anything left at home. He's rallying everything to the other side. He tried to wear two. Yes, that's maybe going well for him at the moment. But if 16 Marines show up and he's got nothing to defend, that's going to be painful. And again, he scanned to see those Medivacs. He is sending a few Marines home. He sieges up a tank, but the drop's going to be in the natural, and those tanks are not going to be there. Oh, Dream, this is the time to get something done. You need some serious damage. 12 workers down to begin with, and that's definitely a good start. Marines are going to start moving forward. The tank gets here as well. That's 24 workers killed. That is kind of a serious issue. The thing is, innovation does not really have any reason to stop pushing forward just yet. Two more medivacs already loaded up, going to go across the map as well. Innovation's brought everything to come and reinforce. I'm just surprised that Innovation hasn't realized that there's just no units here, really. I think he's banking up for an extra... Um, I don't know how much energy he's got on these Ravens. I think he's banking up for an extra Matrix, so you can just mass Matrix everything. Oh my god, he intercepts these medivacs! He's gonna intercept them on the other side! He's not gonna get the kills now, he does! He gets one, he gets two! Oh, Dream! Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice! It's not gonna happen. Innovation is just going to take this 3-1. to one. What a beautiful catch that was. And then he's going to start busting up this natural ramp. And that's going to end the game. What a catch. He knows Dream is going to do the same trick again. He goes, moves his units out over there. Catches them. 20 supply down the drain. And Dream cannot afford that as innovation will be in the GSL finals. What is happening to this auto turret, guys? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I didn't even know the auto turret had an animation of like bullets pouring out the back and piling up. <laughs> the game ends. <laughs> just pooping out. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just pooping out my auto turrets. Uh, <laughs> Why is that so amusing to me? I don't know. All right. Well, as we watch the auto turret here, Innovation does qualify to the DreamHack Fall Masters Season Finals, joining Trap, Rogue, DRG, Stats, and TY. What a lineup that will be, of course. That happens in three to four weeks. Um, obviously, we've got to go through the regional events for Europe, Latin America, and so on first. So that's all going to happen. GG's. That's, <laughs> I will leave you guys with the <laughs> pooping order to it. All right, guys. Let's, uh, let's bring this out again. Let's bring this out.